Today is the 19th Sunday after Pentecost. We're back here again in California in Orange County. And the epistle for this 19th Sunday after Pentecost is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 4. Brethren, be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and put on the new man, who according, who according in God is created in justice and holiness of truth. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak ye the truth every man with his neighbor, we are, for we are members one of another. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your anger. You have not place to the devil. He that stole, let him now steal no more. But rather let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good. And then we have something to give to him that suffereth need. And in the Gospel, taking that according to St. Matthew chapter 22. At that time, Jesus spoke to the chief priests and the Pharisees in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a king who made a marriage for his son. And he sent his servants to call them that were invited to the marriage, and they would not come. And again he sent other servants, saying, Tell them that were invited, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come ye to the marriage. But they neglected and went their way, went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise, and the rest laid hands upon his servants, and having treated them contumeliously, put them to death. But when the king had heard of it, he was angry, and sending his armies, he destroyed those murderers and burnt their city. And then he saith to his servants, The marriage indeed is ready, but they that were invited were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as you shall find, call to the marriage. And his servants going forth into the ways, gathered together all that they found, both the bad and the good. And the marriage was filled with guests. And the king went in to see the guests, and he saw there a man who had not on his wedding garment. And he saith to him, Friend, how comest thou in hither, not having on a wedding garment? But he was silent. Then the king said to the waiters, Bind his hands and feet, and cast him into the exterior darkness, where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Thus for the words of today's Holy Gospel. Today, a few considerations in this hundredth, a hundred years <clears throat> after the time of Fatima, hundred years after the the uh, miracle of the sun, October the thirteenth, a couple of days ago, and a few considerations <clears throat> here. We'll read actually, not able to print out the actual text. We'll just read here from the the text of the Our Lady. <clears throat> In 1957, Sister, Lear, Sister Lucy speaks of Father Fuentes in the last public interview. And I remember a few years later after that, sometime in the 60s or 70s, a little later, we find the <coughs> false Sister Lucy, the false Sister Lucy speaking about the final battle being the battle of the family and also saying that the, the consecration was done properly by John Paul II, and which of course it was not. No Pope has fulfilled the request which was made on June 13, 1929, until this very day, the consecration of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, and that a great punishment is due to come upon the earth because not only the sin of the Pope and the bishops, but also of all of us. And here, and so that uh, speaking in the last <coughs> public interview, and then she was silenced immediately after this, but in uh, 1957, Father, the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Blessed Virgin is very sad because no one has paid attention to her message, neither the good nor the bad. The good because they, can, because they continue on the road of goodness, but without paying mind to this message. The bad because of their sins, do not see God's chastisement already falling on them presently. They also continue on their path of badness, ignoring the message. But Father, you must believe me that God is going to punish the world and chastise it in a tremendous way. 
And we see here in this first part, this chastisement, it has begun in 1960 in a very visible way. And we are in the middle of this chastisement right now. St. Francis of Assisi, as I mentioned earlier, he, he prophesied this chastisement. And what is this chastisement? As Sister will say a little bit later on, it's souls living in the state of mortal sin and going to hell for all eternity. But what, what, we'll come back, we'll just continue. The chastisement of heaven is, em, is imminent. The year 1960 is on us <clears throat> when the secret is supposed to be revealed. And then what will happen? It will be very sad for everyone and far from a happy thing if the world does not pray and do penance before then. I cannot give more details because it is still a secret. Now the will of the Blessed Virgin, only the Holy Father and the Bishop of Fatima can know the secret. Both have chosen, however, not to open it in order not to be influenced by it. So the local Bishop of Fatima and the Pope at the time, Pope Pius XII, they refused. Both the Holy Father, Pius XII, and the Bishop of Fatima can know, uh, can know the secret, but they have chosen, however, not to open it in order to not to be influenced by it. This is the third part of the message of Our Lady which remains a secret until 1960. Tell them, Father, the Blessed Virgin said repeatedly to my cousins Francisco and Jacinta, as well as to me, that many nations would disappear from the face of the earth, that Russia would be the instrument of chastisement from heaven for the whole world, for the whole world if the conversion of that poor nation is not obtained beforehand. A decisive battle with the devil. Sister Lucia also told me, Father, the devil... The devil is fighting a decisive battle against the virgin. And as you know, what most offends God and what will gain him the greatest number of souls in the shortest time is to gain the souls consecrated to God. For this also leaves unprotected the field of the laity and the devil can more easily seize them. Also, Father, tell them thy cousins Francesco and Jacinta made sacrifices because... The always soul of the Blessed Virgin was very sad in all her apparitions. She never smiled at us. This anguish that, that we saw in her, caused by offenses to God and the chastisements that, there, that threatened sinners, penetrated our souls. And being children, we did not know what measures to devise except to pray and make sacrifices. So, Father, the devil is fighting a decisive battle against the virgin and as you know what most offends God and what will gain him the greatest number of souls in the shortest time is to gain the souls consecrated to God for this also leaves unprotected the field of the laity and the devil can more easily seize them so a special attack of Satan on the priests a special attack of the Satan on the clergy and remember that what is this greatest chastisement <clears throat> referring to the the vision of hell, Our Lady showed her and Jacinta and Francisco. Mm -hmm. that, for this reason, Father, it is my mission not just to tell about the material punishments that will certainly come over the earth if the world does not pray and do penance. No, my mission is to tell everyone the imminent danger we are in of losing our souls for all eternity if we remain fixed in sin. Father, we should not wait for the call of wait for a call to the world from Rome and the part of the Holy Father to do penance. We must act now. <clears throat> so for this reason, Father, it is my mission not just not just to tell about the material punishments that will certainly come up over the earth if the world does not pray and do penance. No, my mission is to tell everyone the imminent danger we are in of losing our souls for eternity if we remain fixed in sin. So this great chastisement now is 50 years upon us. <clears throat> and this chastisement is one such that the souls are falling into hell like snowflakes. Remember what it said, Our Lady of, uh, of, of La Salette, souls are sown into hell like snowflakes in the 20th century. Lady of Fatima, souls are going to be green, great lost in great numbers, being fallen in like the raindrops. A massive falling of souls into hell. And this is the greatest chastisement that God sends upon us. We're experiencing that chastisement right now. And it's necessary to see how the devil is infiltrating our hearts infiltrating our work, infiltrating the church in every single level. And remember, there's not only the infiltrators who are the, the Masons and the AA 1025s and the priests that were made, paid to infiltrate the church and faithful in, in infiltrating various organizations. and or, These infiltrators, what is their purpose? Even the communists themselves say it takes 3%. 3% infiltrators to do what? 
to control the other 97%. And the 3% are not the problem. The 3% of paid infiltrators, the 3% of guys that worship Satan and worship the devil and are actually card-carrying masons, these aren't the problem. These infiltrators, when they enter an organization, they get the other 97% to turn to their way of thinking. They get the other 97% to turn away from God. They get the other 97% to think the way the 3% think. And then the 3% can leave. And then the, the people turn away from God. And so the evil is not in the wicked men. There have always been wicked men. There will always be wicked men. There have always been great followers of Satan. There will always be great followers of Satan. These have no power. The only way in which the evil that, <coughs> that <coughs> they promote <coughs> can accomplish anything is that the followers of God obey them. If the followers of God turn away from God, this is the only way. And so we find in the 20th century and now the 21st century the most wicked centuries in the history of the world. Not wicked because there are wicked kings, there have always been wicked kings. Wicked because there are wicked Catholics, wicked mothers, wicked fathers, wicked children. And the wickedness is in all levels. As we see from the fathers, from the teaching of the prophecies of the end times, that at all times there are wicked men, but the signs of the end times, one of the great signs of the end times is that the good will also be wicked. In fact, the good will be filled with a greater wickedness. Who were the good men in the time of Christ? They were the Pharisees. They were the Sadducees to a certain extent, but primarily the Pharisees. They were the good men. They held the true faith. They believed in the correct view of the Messiah. They believed in the resurrection of the body. They were not heretics. But they were filled with a venom in their hearts, which we now find spreading throughout the so-called Catholic tradition, spreading throughout the so-called conservative movement, spreading throughout all those that are supposed to be against, in one level or another, the modern world. We find a great spirit of wickedness in the heart. Now it says very, very clearly in the gospel that if we believe the works of God, if you, if, you are, if you are the sons of Abraham, said Christ to the Jews, if you are the sons of Abraham, do the works of Abraham. One day God said to Abraham, you're the man of faith, all right? Are you really a man of faith? Abraham, at the age of 102, take your only son Isaac, who's 12. Take him into a far place in a mountain and lay him on an altar and sacrifice him to me. I gave him to you, now I want to take him back. Are you a man of faith or not? If you are the son of Abraham, do the works of Abraham. Are they ready to obey God? Are they ready to follow God? We are now in an age in which the Protestant heresy of faith, of this false faith, which is some kind of a dead belief, has entered into the Catholic faith in a very strong way. Because there are so many heretics in the world, and so many in error of all types in the world, we believe that if we believe the truth, if we have the truth, then we have done enough. And yet Christ makes it very clear, the gospel makes it very clear, whoever says to me, Lord, Lord, shall not enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father. And this is a problem today. We are not ready to suffer anything for Christ. We are not ready to do anything for Christ. We don't have the spirit of charity in our hearts. And there is a great increase of wickedness of heart. As we mentioned many times and earlier today, what is the problem? Well, this is the reason why Bishop Sheen says, what is the evil of the news? The evil of the news. We all like the news. What does the news tell us? The news tells us there's more people in the world, there's other many people in the world more wicked than us, and that therefore we're not that wicked. And we're interested in hearing the stories about adulteries and the stories about traitors and the stories about evil men. That's the news. It used to be the 6 o'clock evening news. Now you got the 24 hours news. You got all kinds of news stations. Now you can look up whatever news you want on the internet. And you can find the news about evil men in every stage of life and every single walk of life. And though, what is this to do? To cover our consciences so that we say, well, we're not as evil as that man. I'm not a traitor like him. I'm not an adulterer like him. I'm not a liar like him. I'm not evil like him. And therefore, I'm good. And we are not obeying God. We are not spreading his faith. We are not living according to charity. And wickedness is entering our hearts. And when we shoot against the devil, we shoot with little bitty worthless water pistols. Nothing comes out. Nothing damages the devil. He has 
are soldiers in his camp on all sides, soldiers in the army of Satan on all sides, wearing all colors of uniforms. Christ has only the uniform of faith, hope, and charity. And these three are one. Just like the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are inseparable, so faith, hope, and charity are inseparable. And that without these three together, the faith is useless, hope is meaningless, and charity is not charity. Faith, hope, and charity have to be glued together. And they are the principles of everything we do as followers of Christ. These principles have gone out. They have gone out. Why do we want to be priests? Because we like to say Mass, and we like Latin, and we like incense. Why do we want to be Catholic? Because we like feeling conservative, because the liberal world is too much for us. Why do we like uh, some of the teachings of Christ? Because they make us feel good. We don't feel bad. It's bad when we, when we, when we behave a little bit like Christ. But are you ready to leave father, leave mother, leave, uh, leave uh, sister and brother, leave all things to follow him? Absolutely not. We're not ready to leave any discomfort to follow him. And hence we belong to the kingdom of Satan. We belong to the army of Satan. And here comes an army of a modern militia to fight against the Bilderbergers, a modern militia to fight against the one welders. And they come with all their weapons and all their training and all their weapons. And the devil sends his wimpiest devil with a pea shooter and it wipes them out. Because they are not fighting with the weapons of God. They don't have the charity of God in their hearts. And the devil's spirit is spreading far and wide. And that's what St. Francis Xavier, or rather St. Francis of Assisi said in his prophecy, because they have not stood against error, because they have not opposed error, he said shortly before he died, there shall be a great loss of faith and scandals shall be everywhere because they have not opposed error. And they will descend, depend upon their own religious order to protect them. They'll depend upon their own, their own little wiles, their own, their own order, their own times to protect them. And they, when the time of proving comes, when the time of the test comes, they will fail. And unless these days were shortened, all would be deceived. All flesh would be lost. When you read the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 24, when he talks about deception, it cannot be referring to running away from the communists. When you see your house on fire, and you see the soldiers coming with machine guns, and you have to flee to the mountains, there's no deception. You simply run in fear. What is the deception? The deception is in the soul of those who think they love God. The soul of those that think they are the friends of God. The soul of those that think they are standing with the truth. These souls are all going against God. What is the cause of every problem in the world today? It is Satan. What is the specific problem of our day? Modernism or communism. The same heresy. Its errors are spread everywhere. Trying to rip apart all of the order in society. To prepare the world for the coming of the Antichrist. And what, are, what is the way to fight against it? Prayer and penance. What is the way to fight against it? Spreading the gospel. Spreading the truth. And what, what, is it, what does Our Lady say? Our Lord, Our Lady is sad. She's disappointed with the good. They go on being good, but they pay no attention to this message. This is one of the very good points that Father Gruner used to make before he died. So many of the enemies of Fatima. There are several enemies of Fatima. Those that think Fatima is a hoax and work directly for Satan. But there are other enemies of Fatima who say that Fatima is a true apparition. That Fatima is truly holy. The Tratima is truly spiritual, but it's just a private revelation for the benefit of those that have that particular devotion. There are many devotions that you can practice. You know, the devotion to the, you know, what we pray in our holy hours before, the wound of the right foot, the wound of the left foot, the wound of the right hand, the wound of the left hand, the wound in the side. You can have a devotion to many things. As long as it's related to Christ, you have a devotion to many saints. Is Fatima a devotion? Does it say anywhere that it is? In fact, it is not. It's not a devotion. Our Lord, Our Lady appeared to three children. Three children that knew nothing about technology. Never saw a train. Three children that knew nothing about the outside world. Three children that only watched a couple of sheep and used to do dances and didn't even say the proper whole Hail Mary. Hail Mary. When they said the rosary, and our Lady appeared to them and said, Russia. They didn't know what Russia was. Russia is going to spread her errors throughout the whole world. And our Lady told the three children, 
all souls and half souls throughout the whole world are going to hell. Now these three children, what business is Russia to them? Jacinta and Francisco would die before they turned 10 years old. They would never travel to Russia. What business is it of theirs? And hence, the good pay no attention to the message of Fatima. We are part of a Catholic world. The whole world must be Catholic. Why is it that there is abortion in 1973 in America? Why is it right now, for instance, in the stupid NFL, they're kneeling down during the, during the uh, national anthem. Somebody said, check, kneeling is a sign of devotion. Any of these guys are idiots. Find something that lay down or sleep or something. But in any case, they kneel down during the national anthem because they say they don't believe in the national anthem. What is that? What's the cause of that stupidity? It's called communism. Who spoke about it? Our Lady, 100 years ago, when she said Russia will spread her errors throughout the entire world and in every part of the world, including the crappy National Football League. And so the heresy is, the, what is the cause of that stupidity? It is called communism.